Hi, I'm Lily. Today I'm going to read the story called My Past Time Diaries 9. Okay, I'm going to read you the story. It's the last series of it. Okay, let's read it. Dear Diary, Today is the day. Mom said that Grandma Sadie will should be here by lunchtime. Cosma and I have spent the entire morning getting ready. Once Grandma Sadie is here, the real cabin adventure can begin. Until now, it's like we've just been preparing, cleaning, weeding, spiffing up everything. Now it's time for fun. Grandma Sadie always brings the fun with a capital F U N. I've, I've got the day or planned out. First, we'll have lunch. Mom said we have sandwiches with pickles and potato chips. Yum! After we're done, I'll give you my city a tour of the spruce up garden. Introduce Mrs. Paul Fluffy Jungle Straw with and show her baby sunflowers. Then Cosmo wants to give Grandma Sadie to create the show to her turtle. Maybe over lunch we should share a scrapbook with her and we can take her to see the real thing. Or maybe it would be the best to show her the scrapbook afterward. I'm not sure but we'd better figure it out. After we hang with the peekaboo, that's the name we get the turtle, we'll go on our hike. We'll probably come swim in the lake since it's too cold, but that's okay. Cosmo and I haven't really explored much because we've been waiting for Grandma Sadie. I'll take my backpack with me and surprise Grandma Sadie with a snack, snack break at the halfway point. That is going to help me make Grandma Sadie's favorite hiking travel trail mix a handful which of sunflower with nuts banana chips and dairy free chocolate chips we'll stop at the lookout rock which is the same place where grandma sadie and i once spotted a red fox and their kids that's what you call baby foxes the mom the mama for the mama fox was just walking along the trail looking for her own snack probably not trail mix trail mix it was on lookout rock that Grandma Sadie once told me that even though she gets to travel all over the galaxy as an astronaut, some of her favorite times are exploring the woods around the cabin with me. I'll never forget that. After snack time, we'll head back to the cabin and sit on the porch to watch birds and use Grandma Sadie's app to listen to their course. Cosmo and I will add whatever new birds we saw in our wildlife scrapbook. So maybe that is when we'll share our scrapbook with Grandma Sadie. She might like meeting Peekaboo before seeing how we draw them. Of course, Grandma Sadie's first night at the cabin would, wouldn't be complete without our traditional francs and beans, then hot dogs and baked beans with a, cu with a camping flare cooked over with a campfire and s'mores for the dirt, and then we can play some games, sing songs, and stir games until it's time for bed. In the meantime, Cosmo and I are finishing a welcome home banner for the Grandma Sadie that will hang on the cabin porch so we, so she will see as soon as she, as soon as her car makes the crunch crunch pop pop sound of the gravel driveway. I can't wait. Dear diary, Grandma Sadie is here. I know using so many exclamation points is silly, but this deserves all the exclamation points. I was helping mom get lunch ready and was actually in the middle of filling a bowl of potato chips when I heard her pull into the driveway. I dropped a bag of chips immediately, grabbed Cosmo, and ran outside. Mom and dad followed. Cosmo and I pointed out the welcome home banner to her as we hugged, and I started to tell her all about my plans for the day. We helped Grandma Sadie unload her car, and as soon as we got to the cabin, we sat down at the kitchen table to wait. Lunch was the longest lunch in the history of lunches ever. Or, at least, it felt that way. I guess I wasn't the only one who was excited to see Grandma Sadie. Mom and Dad had a lot they wanted to share with her. It's okay, Cosmo and I can wait for our turn. After lunch, Grandma Sadie wanted to lie down for a while. I can understand. Traveling back to Earth from outer space then, and then driving up a mountain is tiring. Mom suggested that we go visit the turtle. If we saw the help. We saw to help the pass the time, but I didn't feel like doing much of anything without Grandma Sadie. I mean, I had toward Peekaboo that the next time we visited will be with Grandma Sadie. I didn't want to disappoint them. I could already tell the Cosmo was boomed because he was looking a little blue. So I scooped him up, grabbed our scrapbook, and headed out to the picnic table to draw pictures of the wonderful, full adventures we were going to have with Grandma Sadie. It was a good distraction, and Cosmo was yellow. He was excited in color. 
in no time. I told him it's okay that we aren't completely following our plan. There's a forest tie with the cabin family tradition. We'll make a campfire and our dinner over it. We always make friends and beans on the first night we were all here together. They are my favorite, especially cooking over a fire. After dinner, we'll make s'mores and make turns sharing our shows. Made us happy during the day. I love the part. It's time. It's fun to hear everyone's stories. Kazuma and I usually made a drawing of us hugging Grandma Sadie as we as she arrived. We'll get and get up tonight at the campfire. It's probably a good thing Grandma Sadie wants to nap now because tonight is going to be the best ever. Cosmo and I will make sure of it. Dear Diary, I don't believe this. Nothing is going right. And now our first cat night at the cabin is ruined. You're never going to believe what happened, Diary. Cosmo and I were getting everything set for tonight's campfire. Usually, my whole family does this together, but Cosmo and I were eager and decided to do just it ourselves. Mm, it would be a surprise for everyone. We placed the camp chairs around the fire pits, then we searched the yard for kindling. That's a word that uses for small sticks to keep the fire going up. Now we finished our drawing for Grandma Sadie. Everything was ready and everything was going to be perfect. Just as we finished, we heard Mom and Dad say, Mom, Granny Sadie, Kai and Kay talking in the cabin. She was awake. We were about to yell them, yell to them to see all we have done. The worst thing ever happened. A forest ranger walked out of our driveway and asked if my grown-ups were home. I said yes, and when he started to get them, Dad came out and said hi to the forest ranger, whose name was apparently Phil. Well, Phil said he was going to going around to all the cabins to tell people that because it had been an extremely dry summer, a barn barn a barn ban was being placed in the area. I didn't know what that meant at first, but Dad said they were telling people no campfires. They said it would too, it's too dangerous because any little spark could start a forest fire with everything so dry. I had to hold back tears as my dad dad for the information. I know it's not Phil's fault, but I glared at his bed and walked over to the down the driveway and headed to the next cabin to burn someone else's night. A barn van means no campfire. A barn van means we'll have to cook the francs and means the boring inside soup. A barn van means no toasting marshmallows. An absolute and absolutely no s'mores. How in the world are we supposed to have the best first night at the cabin ever with if we haven't had any of those things? I wanted to ask Phil how how he would feel if he could celebrate one of his family traditions. Of course, I care about the forest. I don't. I wouldn't want um, Peekaboo and all our new Woodland friends to lose their home in the fire. That would be awful, but this doesn't seem poor, doesn't seem fair. Grandma said so I was upset and wrapped her arms around me. She said, it's okay, Piper. We don't have need of a campfire to have a special night. We can make a new family tradition. You know what? She's right. Piper McLean does not pout. It's time for plan B. Okay. Dear Diary, after Forest Ranger Phil left, we had a family meeting. We came out that uh, we found out that Cosmo and I were not the only ones disappointed about the campfire plans changing. We were great that we could still share our happy moments tonight and enjoy being together. But Dad said he had a hankering funny word for that word for fast and beans were I. Grandma Sadie said that she'd write to the other astrobots explorers about being able to eat s'mores tonight. Mom tried to come up with the other meal ideas, but nothing sounded good to any of us. That's when Grandma Sadie said that she could see could still cook Frank's and beans and s'mores outside if we made a solar oven, meaning we could cook our Frank's beans and toast our marshmallows and melt the chocolate or with the power of the sun. Wow, this is what, why it is super cool to have a grandma who is also a scientist. She said, we have to fast, we have to wait fast before the sun runs below the plate time. So it looked like we'd be eating our dinner a little early, but that was okay. We quickly gathered the materials and we would need. 
But luckily, I got a whole total of first Grandma City cut on a rectangular shape fabric on top of the box. Cosmo and I have the line inside the box, including the fab with aluminum foil shining side on it. And Grandma City said that this, that this word, that this would reflect the sun because the inside of the box heat up and cook the food. Then we then we place a piece of book of instruction paper that we cut to the few inches smaller than the heads. The color box soaks up the sun and becomes super hot. We are back in short a hot summer day. This was where we would place our food. Last we taped the plastic wrap to the inside of the top, covering the opening of the flap. Grandma City said that this would trap the heat inside. Once our solar oven was complete and we positioned the box so that it was an indirect in direct sun sunlight the fan was propped open with a stick so that the sun could get to the pots pot of beans and a few hot dogs on a dark colored plate or cooking grate inside we all stood around the box and watched it was amazing the sun cooked them right before our eyes Maybe not right before our eyes. It took about thirty minutes, which is a bit, which is a lot longer than we would take on the campfire. But that's all right. Already we pretended we were prehistoric chefs cooking with the sun. Chef Piper and Chef Cosmo are clearly geniuses. That's what that cord is when we made something super delicious. After we ate our hot dogs, which were, pre which were cooked perfectly. By the way, we tried using the solar oven to make the s'mores. I placed marshmallow on a gluten-free gluten ham cracker and sprinkled some dairy-free chocolate chips on top. The solar oven did its magic again. I'm not having to worry about my marshmallow catching on fire. It's just that evenly we and gooey like the chocolates. We were sat around chatting until it was dark. I looked over the stars with the without the light from the campfire. They were much easier to see. They were like a gazillion of them. We could see the Milky Way. Grandma City pointed out some constellations and told stories about that, even though we had or heard of those stories before. They were still magical. Cosmo went to the cabin and brought back to the sleeping bag that I had made to him. I guess he wanted to be super cozy as he listened to Grandma City. Could it be any cuter? Um, we wouldn't have built a solar when they made such a fun memories. Thanks, Phil. But Cosmo and I shared our picture anyway. And guess what? Grandma City said that her wow was also when he hugged our family. We'll have so many other adventures at night at the cabin. And even if you don't go exactly as we planned or as, you, as they had before, it doesn't mean they're ruined, just different. And different can be great. So today I will just record my present diaries 9. Okay, bye. Thank you for watching.